mean, we had the National Field Board here, and Gail, I think you were the producer, right, Gail? I was the writer, producer, director. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, she also helped. She also helped. She also did the craft services as well. That's right. Anyway, um, <laughs> really so uh, I met Paraskeva's family as well, Clive and, Clive and Mary Clark. They were very supportive, and uh, she was an amazing woman. I'll tell one quick story. Uh, when I opened this gallery, I thought I've got this. Uh, you know, this was like everything to me. And I thought, you know, we have these. We had a, a full liquor bar, which you know was sort of something happening in those days. And people smoked like they filled the place with cigarette smoking. And so many, we had this many people, and they just dropped their cigarettes on the carpet and crushed them. And I was just horrified. And they, they did that in bars and stuff. And anyway, my father was around. He knew Paris Kevin. That's how I met her. And they, he, my father said to me, uh, "John, you are going to have to bend the rules on your bar." Uh, Paris Geva Clark wants beer, and I said, but Dad, I stick to my formula here. Uh, we always have uh, 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 liquor and spirits and pop and stuff. But anyway, he said, no, you have to have beer. So I said, fine, okay, you know, so I argue. So I got the beer in, and uh, as soon as Paris Geva Clark came through the door, we gave her a bouquet of flowers. She abandoned them rather quickly. There was a circle of people around that sort of clapped and she sort of stared at them. And then she went to the bar immediately and demanded a beer. And for the rest of the night, she assisted the people. Well, I don't think of that she'll actually press cigarettes in the carpet, but she assisted the, the mix in the carpet by telling raucous stories and spilling most of the beer. <laughs> so anyway, there was a little more of a cleanup the next day than I was used to. Anyway, we're happy to have to be hosting this. It was kind of something that Jane, Lynn, and I, uh, or maybe I said I maybe I could get some paintings together and we could have kind of an event. And uh, I think you can uh, see from the response that. Uh, it's working out. Now I'd like to introduce Jane Lynn, the author. She is the uh, celebrity of the evening, and uh, Jane is here to say a few words about it. Hi, Hi. Uh, In case not everybody knows, there are also drawings and paintings downstairs. Not upstairs, but downstairs that you might want to see. This afternoon, when my husband and I were driving to Toronto, we live out uh, in the Rockwood Guelph area, we drove through a really heavy downpour. Then the sun came out. And there were two rainbows, one above the other. Not one rainbow, two, a double rainbow. I have never seen that before, and I thought, that's got to do with Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> During her career, she gave a number of lectures on Russian art, on women in art, on art history, and other topics related to the arts. And her hand notes, her handwritten notes for these lectures communicate a real passion for art and an admirable intelligence. Almost 60 years ago, she gave a lecture at the Art Gallery of Hamilton. And in that lecture, she talked to the Ontario government of the time because the government was not taking seriously the work of professional artists. They were apparently buying, according to her, amateur work, and she was distressed by that. And she felt that the government officials did not have an understanding of art as an expression of the soul of the people and a repository for the spirit of a society. She also said, the process of the growth of a nation's art is the process of the growth of the soul of the nation, of the conscience of that nation. I think if Paris Gava were alive now, I think she would speak out against our federal government's disregard for the arts, a disdain that pops up in a number of ways. One example, the cancellation of the National Portrait Gallery because of the cost of $45 million. And yet, the same government has found $19 billion for the military, 
placing us at the 15th highest military spender in the world. Bravo. The arts are the most peaceful manifestation of human culture activities, Paris Deva told her audience in Hamilton. And it is through art that we nurture the human spirit, and I would add, not through military spending. We as, we as citizens of this nation would do well to pay attention to what Paris Deva had to say. Now, I want to recognize the Clark, family, the Clark family who are here. I'm so delighted they came. First of all, Clive and Mary Clark, please raise your hands. And the two granddaughters, Panya Clark Espinal and Jenny Mazurkowitz. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> they helped me a tremendous amount with this book. Uh, I want to say thank you to Cormorant Books, Mark Cote, the publisher, and the staff. <laughs> Brian Ibius and Angel Guerra. I don't know Angel. Is he here? No, he's not. And the other, uh, another, there are two designers. Uh, Denise Goddard yeah, designed the interiors. Yeah. And Barry Jowett. Yeah, Barry Jowett, I, I mentioned. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think it's a beautiful book. It and is. Uh, yeah. designers, uh, and all of Cormorant who've been wonderful to work with. <laughs>